This is my Players Discus Volume 1. I decided after the turn of the millennium to write this book after I have seen hundreds and maybe thousands of discus books around the world. But hardly anyone of these people has ever been in the Amazon or done research in the origin where these fishes come from. And I said after I have done 330 Amazon expeditions that I know a little bit about the Amazon and their beautiful fishes and I can possibly write some information about it which will help the world to understand better this amazing beautiful fish. This book covers the entire history of discus and the Amazon river system. It covers a history of 14,000 years of Amazonia with the first settlements, everything in detail. And people think it only covers the entire history of discus. No, it covers the entire history of this continent. And uh, in detail, I show the people who were involved. I have in the introduction already written so much about actually the word discus, which has also been misused. And I have a big chapter on how to use this book because it's different from any other book ever written before. So the history shows the very first beginning on the first collecting and most people have no idea that it was actually based because of Napoleon Bonaparte that the discus were discovered by white men. And it explains the history how they traveled in the 18th and 19th century to South America, how they collected the first ones. All expeditions are included and all their discoveries and it goes back to all the famous people who have been involved in this. Also throughout the 20th century, including my grandfather, including the fir first people who found the Neon Tetra. And it shows the first airplane transportations and my mother's discovery and search for discos in the 1950s, which actually came out in all the magazines uh, around the globe, even in New York Times and elsewhere. It covers the findings of a man called Axelrod. It covers my first findings in the 1960s and the first transport within Brazil, which had never been done before on airplane. And then a lot of my expeditions in the 16th and 17th 1970s are covered in this book. And then I have a second chapter about the taxonomy. It tells the exact description of the species, the very first ones, and the following ones of the second one. And naturally it covers also the third and all the subspecies. Three and shows for the first time the exact distribution, political and also geographical. And it also shows where it has been introduced already a long time ago. Then there are detailed maps with the three main water characters because in Amazonia or South America and elsewhere it's decided that there is white water, there is clear water and there is black water. So the paintings done by my dear wife Natasha are exactly the paintings of the watercolors which are encountered throughout the Amazon basin. So anyone can follow it precisely and will know which water is where and can also see which of the three known species is found where. Such a detailed map no one has ever done and I'm sure no one will ever do. This is very precise information with the exact name of each location. Chapter four then is the variants I found in nature and it goes by species. I mean, first is Symphysiolon discus, which is the heckle discus so-called, 
and how to identify it correctly. And I have given quite a few variants, each one with the exact locality, so anyone can verify this, all the heckle and heckle cross forms. Then there is the green discus with the variants and all the places where I found them. I mean, I found altogether more than 380 different discus variants. And the third species, which is the most variable of all, because it can have from 17 to 8 bars, whatever. This is precisely given in here, the information with the locality where I found which one. This is also something very important for people who keep this beauty to know where they come from, because the importers and the exporters and shops have rarely, really, very rarely precise information where they have been found, except for recent work of Hudson Crisanto, a dear friend of mine, who is giving the correct localities. The chapter five is the biggest chapter of all in the book because it tells you from the very first beginning the history of the Amazon River, the correct lengths, and all the details of the discoverers. Every Indian tribe I visited, there are more than 75 Indian tribes in detail explained here. They are very detailed information on the biology of Amazon freshwater fishes. More than 400 are described here in details. I show the deforestation which takes place throughout the Amazon. I show and talk about World War II and even World War I, the first discoverers and all the Indian tribes past and present. This is an immense chapter with an immense history, also including the rubber history and much, much more. The affluence, their underwater photos, their lorica reeds, their maps galore, they are every single village along the Amazon River, every city is in detail described with when the city was founded, who was the founder, the names, why they have the names, and the fishes that are living with the discus in each habitat are described here. The boats which people use, the fishermen, and so much more. There is a write-up of um, most of the Amazon plants, the trees, and also the flowers. And they are also the first uh, people who have drawn fishes from the Amazon are mentioned here. Why the water is black, why the water is white. I show this throughout in detail. And after this biggest chapter, which goes throughout the Amazon, we have here, uh, I show the first pyramids that have never been shown before. After this big chapter, we have a very good information about the past Indian tribes, which are no, living no longer. And we have then about how discus feed in nature during the high water and during the low water, vice versa. And I have given all the parameters for each species, which has never been done. And I show then also how they feed in nature, when the water is high or when the water is low. And I have examined more than a thousand discus specimens immediately after collecting, as you can see here, and I have analyzed what, in the laboratory what they have in their stomach. So I have a very good picture of what discus eat in nature. And in the first place is ditritus or detritus, however you want to say it, vegetable, plant materials. I have examined the algae they have eaten, many different species. They are all found in this book. And I have also after the algae, the uh, aquatic and the terrestrial uh, invertebrates written up in detail and 
after all the food they take in, I have made a very clear picture of the number and quantity they intake in the dry season and in the high water season. For each species, this is in detail given. And also for many other Amazon fishes. Huh? And then I show at the end uh, many of the river systems where I found them, what other fishes they live with. I show what fishes live in the same habitat of discus, which is also hardly ever given and practically never said before. So it's a very complete book about the Amazon. It even explains about the alpha animal which is a painting done by Natasha also. And when alpha animals fight, it's very similar to many other animals like elephants or whatever. It's a complete work, which should be good for today's and for all future generations, because it's already came out in 13 languages and no one will ever do anything similar. So it will help today's and future generations always.